Well, Frank, here we go. So um, I saw the pictures and was horrified but not shocked. This is where we've been heading. Um, you don't start with footsie and end up anywhere other than tangled up in the sheets together in bed, and that's where Donald Trump is right now with QAnon. What does that mean for the QAnon adherents in America? Yeah, I saw it as, as well, and I was, uh, I was astonished by the messaging there. It's actually quite strategic and certainly nothing spontaneous or accidental about it. When, look, when you combine the characteristics of a cult with all the trappings of a religion, you've got a very volatile, dangerous scenario on your hands. And, you know, I frequently refer to uh, the MAGA movement as a form of cult, but Clearly, if you watch that Youngstown, Ohio rally, and if you were to actually take Trump out of the video, just listen to the video, with, just listen to the audio of the music at the last moments of the, of the rally, plus the crowd, watch the crowd, and that, that kind of one word, that, that one finger gesture, hands raised to the heavens. You, you would think you're at, in the final moments of a, a evangelical worship service in some meg, mega church that's gone mad. Um, all that it was missing was was the altar call at, at the end. There is a religiosity about this that's extremely disturbing. You know, there's a book out right now that essentially twists Christian theology into asserting that Trump is the, the son of man referred to in the Bible when it's intended to refer to Christ. This, this author seems to imply that, no, actually, there's a son of God who's Christ, and then there's a son of man, and that's Trump. Um, that's where we are today, Nicole. And when you do that, you get people who are absolutely willing to sacrifice their souls and their lives because it's no longer about politics anymore. It's about where they're going to spend eternity. And if you've convinced people that this is the man, this is the man you've got to uh, adore and worship because it's your very soul at stake and the soul of the nation, then you're in a very dangerous situation. If power is taken from him, whether it's through an indictment or another lost election, it becomes extremely dangerous. Frank, I, I really wish this wasn't the news, um, but this is the news. And so I'm going to keep going with the FBI's um, latest reporting that we have on how the FBI views QAnon. This is from a June 4th, 2021 FBI threat assessment on QAnon specifically. Um, adherence to QAnon by some domestic violent extremists will likely be affected by factors such as the severity of the COVID-19 pandemic, the level of societal polarization in the United States, social media companies' willingness to host QAnon-related content on their sites, and the frequency and content of pro-QAnon statements by public individuals who feature prominently in core QAnon narratives. So we, we tick all five of the boxes that the FBI warned us torques up the threat that QAnon represents to America. And there's there's no um, reporting that suggests that any of the FBI threat assessments are among the documents that were um, at Mar-a-Lago. But clearly, Trump knows this, right? Knows he's playing with fire, knows what the threat environment looks like in the United States of America. Oh, not only do, do I think he knows it, but I think that's what attracts him to this. It's like a moth to the flame. And, and the thing is, he knows that he's increasingly cornered. He's in trouble on so many legal fronts, even criminal fronts now, that this is kind of the almost last act of a desperate man. And you can, you can look at this and go, you know, Frank, be careful, because that Youngstown, Ohio rally was actually sparsely attended. The camera shots looked great, right? Just people are stacked up behind him and right in front of him. But largely, there, there was nobody in that, otherwise in that arena. So you could say, this isn't that big a threat. And I say, yeah, I got gotcha you on the attendance issue. But what is extremely dangerous, based on past uh, histories of cults, is that as they come near the end, as the, as the leader is threatened, they get more and more dangerous. And they do something cult experts call forcing the end. Either the leader calls for the violence, or if the leader's taken out, the members take a step up and force the ending, whatever that could be. That's what concerns me. And we've learned from January 6th, it only takes a small number of people to do that. And Frank, we know from Donald Trump's interview with Hugh Hewitt last week that he's put law enforcement on alert. He's told them, my people are going to be mad, mad, mad. And to your point, Frank, here's what an extremist um, expert said on CBS yesterday about, you know, to your point, you, you didn't take a lot. It didn't take a lot of cult members when incited by Donald Trump and warned publicly on the Hugh Hewitt radio show 
to carry out the violence he's warned about. Today, there are 13 million individuals, the equivalent, I should say, of 13 million individuals who support the use of force to restore Donald Trump to the presidency. The problem that we face is that um, over and over in uh, tweets by the former president, he is deliberately stoking not just the fires of anger getting him political support, mm -hmm. but the fires that are leading to that violent 13, the, the equivalent of 13 million. And that is really the heart of our problem that we face as a threat to democracy. Mm -hmm. Because if it's just just a political threat, well, then we can have elections. But once it's not just denying an election, but using violence as yeah. the response to an election denial, now we're in a new game. So it's all part of a plan charted out on paper by people who study the rise of violent domestic extremism in societies. It just hasn't happened here in a really long time. But the denial of the election result as a political maneuver comes first, and what it precedes is violence. Frank, how do we prepare for what comes next? So there's there's incremental steps that aren't even moving fast enough. The electoral count legislation that's coming up in Congress is somewhat helpful to clarify the role of the vice president and how we count the uh, electoral college count. But but look, there's a penetration strategy, infiltration of state, local, county uh, election officials, even adding out <laughs> that to over 100, something like 119 people running for office throughout the country that are election deniers, get them in the House, the Senate, get them in key positions in key swing states as election officials. And now you've got a recipe where we may not even be able to seat a legitimately elected next president of the United States, because that's the degree of infiltration that's gone on here. And that's a recipe for violence, even as early as the midterms that could happen. And if I go back in my career to international terrorism. It's that combination of religion and cult status that gets people to the point will they, where they will martyr themselves. We do have a Trump death count. I wrote a column on this for MSNBC Daily, where I start counting up the people who died, from the guy who walked into the FBI Cincinnati field office to people killed at the Capitol on January 6th and others who died because of their belief. That's just that's more than a cult. There is this religious aspect that's extremely disturbing. 